Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're back in Star Ruler 2. We're going to do another uh, video here covering general tips and suggestions and starting strategies based off of the uh, current build. The build that came out on the 12th really changed the game overall and it kind of made our older strategies more or less obsolete. So we've got a, we're, we've had to come up with rather a number of different strategies that we could use to um, basically just uh, get a good start for the game and have a strong base going forward that will let you uh, play on higher difficulty levels or just really enjoy the game altogether. All right, so uh, the first major part of the update is the uh, point system to allow customization of your race, and this is definitely something that I would encourage you to work with on custom races. The default ones are fine, but custom races give you a lot better advantage since you can pick exactly what you need. Uh, the first thing I usually go with is frugal and nimble, since that uh, increases your engine thrust for 30% and you're using one less tier one resource for every upgrade level. So that makes a huge economic difference right there. Now beyond that, you see all these other options here. We don't really need to worry too much about it. Uh, the way we have our point spread that's going to be at the end of this, we will have one more point to spend and we're going to spend it on prideful just because that bonus, the uh, defense generation bonus and the influence stake bonus really adds up and all you have to do is just add one to the uh, number of the ship size of course of course it's a larger bonus with each or with a higher difference in ship size but basically you really only have to add one and then you start getting some each time you build a new ship now government type uh, you can go with pretty much any of them that's the same as before the largest natural benefit is going to be from the Empire but the benefit even then is still so negligible that what I've actually been doing is just going with random government because it really doesn't matter to me all the starting things are really well balanced and they don't really have any particular flavor to them but the uh, random one gives you the 200k plus the regular bonus. So you can have uh, 600k if you capitalism, or you can have the extra nearby asteroids and 200k for the random government, and so on, of course. Now I do, as we've discussed previously, I do like to disable starting fleets. So the fleet I'm not worried about either. Now I always go with sublight because it gives you the points to spend. And really there's not too much to worry about for hyperdrive or various different forms of hyperdrive. And the Patriotic Surge card is not that good of a bonus compared to the three points you get for using sublight. So really, it's uh, unless you're using a really spaced out map, you're not going to use hyperdrive much. And even then, your hyperdrive is still only going to be really beneficial for particularly uh, gates or fling beacons where you can set it up and just drop in next to an enemy and just have your fleet go from the other end of the galaxies to the front line in a matter of seconds which really it's not too much of a problem if you manage your fleets properly throughout the game All right, so last here uh, space program is useless there's really no need for it at all so we end up going with uh, Ancient Workshop and Moon Base. And I have done something wrong here because we are one point over. So we will go ahead and go back to Personality and we will take off Prideful. Because we don't need it. Alright, I've been playing with a few of the other races. Uh, what I'm going to go with right now is Devote. Devote has a nice advantage in the beginning. The Shrines, which work as shields, really increase your staying power in a fight. And since you had that from the get-go, your earlier ships are going to have a huge advantage that way. And particularly the biggest advantage they have is that one increased maximum population per planet level. That is a huge income bonus right there. And the altar is an easy thing to manage. It's real easy to get through that, and that we can cover as well. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and increase our difficulty because we don't play on normal anymore. We've done that in the last one and it was just too easy. So we are going with hard. Now what I've been doing is doing about 15 expanse galaxies, so you don't start out in the same galaxy, but you'll have a decent size galaxy to work with. And of course there's going to be remnants as well you have to deal with. I've been uh, doing a particular version where the systems and planet sizes and pretty much everything I'm increasing. Civilian trade I bring down just for performance reasons. 
though it also does have economic effects, but uh, basically I just reduce civilian trade about 20% to uh, just help the game run smoother at higher levels. Now, th since these are map settings, it benefits not just yourself, but all the other players and even the AI, of course. So you don't have to worry about the game being unbalanced when you're increasing your map settings. What I'm doing here is basically just increasing things up to a particular way that I like to have it, where more or less you're going to have an abundance of planets, an abundance of extra asteroids and occurrences and whatnot throughout each different system. It just makes each one more uh, dynamic, more diverse. I'm actually going to go ahead and increase artifact frequency. So I like to check all of these here. Go ahead and start the game up. Now, before I had you basically going through and start terraforming from the get-go, which you still can do, you can still use the terraforming. The problem is that terraforming to the economic ones, like textiles, it now costs a astronomically high amount of cash. So you're not going to really be able to pull that off until mid-game. So that tactic is when has gone rather from a beginning game tactic to a mid game to late game tactic where you are converting these items over and influence cards now matter a lot more particularly cultivation because you are going to need those cultivation cards to decrease your overall cost by not having to have farms and of course by freeing up planets that are normally food planets by using cultivation so you don't actually have to have that planet anymore and you can actually change it over now, the uh, Devote one, as you saw, does require you to use altars to match the population. It uses all the resources on the starting planet. Your starting planet, which counts as a food planet, we'll go ahead and pause it here. So your starting planet, which counts as a food planet, it uses its food resource as a sacrifice, and of course, as you see here, as the planet levels up, the amount of maximum empire population it supports increases. Now, you can have more than one altar in your empire, but only one per planet, and it can't be removed, so it's basically stuck where it is. So unfortunately, this one's an ugly spot, and that's just where it's going to be. Now, what we've been doing with the new approach is we built a research complex. Luckily, we've got crystal. Normally, you just build on the moon base, because that's why we took the perk. But we go ahead and build it on the crystal, because that's just as cheap. And then we will go ahead and build a farm. Yeah, we'll keep that off of the moon base. And then we'll build a spell s space elevator, which you don't actually have to put it anywhere particularly, because the price, as you see, does not change. So we'll go ahead and toss it on the worst terrain, and that's usually the best idea for those items that the price does not change at all where you place it. It's just to toss it on the worst actual terrain, usually like magma is like the worst you can get. Alright, so then we'll go ahead and tell it to colonize all the planets, and we will go ahead and queue these up to export to the nearest one, which luckily this is a economic planet. So once you've got that, basically those two will get colonized, they'll export to here, and that one will export to our home world. We'll go ahead and unpause it. Go back into our home world here. So we'll go ahead and queue up a miner, and then three scouts. Actually, I did do a custom design for the scouts, which I'll go over in another video. Let me import that. And let's see if I can remember what it's called now. So you can see I've been playing with the uh, different ship and station designs. There we go. That's the one. Oh, right. We need a shrine for this faction. There we go. Alright, so let's uh, take a look at that there. We'll, we'll queue it up first. Queue up the construction, rather. There it is. So I'll go back into the design, take a quick look at it here. The reason I'm using my custom scout rather than the... It, oh, 
wrong category. All right, so basically it's uh, 24.3 US and then it's 15.4 US here. Now this one obviously has some defense and some offense capabilities, which I stripped off on my scout because, well, you don't need it as a scout. It's for scouting. Let's find us a rock to mine. Automatic. Now, as you see, we increased our uh, asteroids there. So this one here, so we got three different options for us to pick from, and we've gotten lucky and gotten a tech two on this, which is a research option. So of course, what we're gonna do is tell it to go ahead, build that and then we'll import it. All right, little scout, go ahead and go on out. And we'll increase the speed a bit. There was a tad bit of latency, I think I've uh, overpopulated the map, basically. Maybe 15 galaxies was a bit much to begin with. Alright, so as you see, we start out with all these artifacts in our home system here, which gives us a good variety. Since it is randomized, I've actually seen like stellar generators and uh, planet generators and all that in the starting galaxy, or starting system rather. It's completely randomized as with any other artifacts, so. You can get some pretty interesting things, and I would theorize you'd probably even be able to get one of the remnant parts in there, but it's not confirmed. Right, let's see, found a Genesis device. It'll give us a Tech 2 planet once we get to using that, but that's later on. Alright, so our planets here are fully populated. Or rather, started the colonization, yeah. So once this gets up to 2 plus population, that'll start exporting those goods back to the home planet. Make sure he's still mining. Now you can also use your scouts to scout the debris fields, of course, but since some of the options include the option to uh, increase the stats of that particular fleet, I prefer to wait until I've actually got a combat fleet going. As you see our scouts, I've had no problem just flying past the remnant fleets and just recounting other locations, and that's why I built the uh, custom scouts, relatively the same cost to produce them, and they are just much faster. It's just more streamlined. And the default designs, they're nice, they're very base, but as we've discussed in previous videos, they are not 100% balanced towards what they should be. Alright, so let's take a look at our Tech 1 planet here. And we will go ahead... I uh, know we'll actually go back to the home planet for it. I was going to put a research facility there. But the home planet can have our second research facility because it's got crystal on it. And once we get up to mega cities, we'll start uh, expanding there. Now, next we're going to go back to uh, research, which the new research tree is nice. It's very more streamlined, easier to use, and the best thing is you can queue up your researches. So we'll go ahead and queue up both of those, and actually we'll go ahead and just queue up that as well. Uh, what you want to do is just start working towards mega cities because that's a huge advantage right there. So we'll queue up all the way over to that and even get propulsion afterwards because it's a cheap one. And then basically what we'll do next is we'll get the base ones for each of these, because they're nice benefits to have. We'll go ahead and get Metallurgy, both of those, and then Construction, because that will increase our Empire building speed. And pick up Ballistics. Organization to increase fleet size.
Mass production, commerce again, and targeting. Now beyond that, you can expand pretty much wherever you want, but that's pretty much a good starting plan for your research. It gets you a strong economic base, you get up to mega cities fairly quickly, and then of course you'll have your regular fleet bonuses that you have as well. Then beyond that you can expand to where else you need normally. If you didn't have shrines because you're not planning to devote uh, lifestyle, then you would have to research through here to get sh the uh, shield generator here. And a lot of these trees, they kind of branch back in. Uh, Ring World is a little bit down here after Artificial Planetoid, so that's a good direction to go, is down towards here as well. Since those are really going to give you a huge economic boost for later game. But for beginning and up to middle game, this is pretty much the start of where you want to go. Cultivation. We don't have any influence right now. So that card is going to be wasted. Alright, so let's go ahead and do our typical uh, fleet option. Where is it? There we go. I'm increasing the heavy carrier. Now, since we are using Devote, we are going to also have the Shrine. about that my microphone cut out all right so we have the shrines which are your shield generators and basically what we're going to do with this is we are going to um well we're going to build this up so that we have a stronger defense normally we'd just throw a bunch of armor plating on this but of course we don't need that this time we're just going to replace that entire engine area with it Decent amount of health. And we don't need all that extra control. We'll actually strip some of the armor off. Since we have shrines, it's a shield, so we don't really need the armor plating. So we'll strip that off to get our speed back up. To correct that. That right there takes care of that. We'll go ahead and build our heavy carrier. Now, once that mine finishes, we'll actually look out and we'll have our tech two there. So we'll go ahead and queue up another farm, and that will get us up to level three. Normally, you'd have to expand into another planet, use a cultivation card, or or no, sorry, you have to expand it to another system and get a tech 2 that way. Alright, so let's take a look at our surrounding area. Now these are barren planets, they have nothing on them. And those are really great for the devote race because we can just throw shrines on there and it still gives us the bonus. So those will end up being shrine planets later on. But for right now we are basically taking a look at what kind of techs we have. It's a research tech, so that would be a good one to have. We'll go ahead and queue up colonization there. We'll take a look at the water planets here. They all look fairly much the same, so we'll queue up one of those to help export. Check that one. All right. We'll take a look at the food planets. 
This one has geothermal vents, so that's going to be the one we want. And queue up the export. And that right there will give us another Tech 1 planet. Now, normally, we, or previously rather, we were doing the terraforming of our main planets to uh, get the economic uh, benefit on each of them, but in this case, we are just going with the uh, capture, or selective capture rather, and building up that mm -hmm. way. So that way we um, more or less minimize our cost. It's a bit, well, not, not necessarily slower, just because the uh, cost balance of the terraforming for textiles now is a million. It's just not a viable option for early game, as we discussed previously. That's a volatile there. That's a good one. We'll take that. And we'll go back over here and take one of these. Let's find us a decent Tech 1 or Tech 2 or even Tech 3 planet to start building up. Alright, that's a Research 1. So we'll talk to Colonize there. And yeah, we'll go ahead and pick that one. The extra items like the geothermal vents are really important to uh, check out when you're picking your different planets. This particular time we're not looking for defense because that just increases our strain on a beginning economy. So we're kind of avoiding those right now. Money and influence. That is definitely a good one to get right there. I would prefer a moon planet over a regular planet just because it gives us the option to expand it later on. This one's got geothermal vents and rare metals, so that will give us research and energy. I'm sure you can see now, oh, text or electronics, that's a money planet. But I'm sure you can see now as to why we go with the uh, larger planet and system settings. It just really gives us a good benefit overall. That's textiles, that's also money. energy there. Energy and influence. And we'll go ahead and start queuing colonization of these other water planets because we're going to need those. As you see, it kind of makes the uh, base food and water production relatively scarce to begin with. And actually more or less stays that way throughout the game. That's where your uh, cultivation cards and your comets will come in handy.
correct. It's got two water plants importing to it. Now, the good thing about the uh, exporting is that you don't have to worry about the remnant plates, because you're still going to be able to export even with them present. As you remember, the ancient shipyard is definitely something we're going to want to pick up. So we'll definitely focus on getting that. Our economy is technically in the red right now because it's got all the colonization. And what we'll see is a growth up to uh, green, obviously once colonization starts to finish on most of those planets. So we'll speed it up real quick just to get that process going. There's not really going to be much of anything that we can do right now otherwise. We've got our tech queued up to research. Take a look at our diplomacy real quick. Uh, nothing of really any value there. So you see our economy is slowly growing and then shrinking again as more and more planets are colonized. But since we've queued up a number of different colonizations, it's going to take a few minutes here. But once it's done, we should have a strong econo economic base again. appears to be over pressure capacity. That should fix that. As you see, the economy has gone back into the, uh, the black here. Most of those planets are fully colonized now. up. Once those three are colonized, we'll have the food needed to uh, get everything up and running. Now at this point, we've got, well, over two million income. So once those planets are set up, you can actually start looking at terraforming and using our old textile method to terraform those more or less unnecessary planets like FTL shard planets, which we don't need when we're using sublights. And that way we'll uh, just have more income overall. So this gives us a good strong economic base here, and it's within the first hour of the game. You're pretty much set and ready to go to start expanding militarily at this point. And of course with all the different items that you have with these particular map settings, there's just a plethora of different things that you can do and experience at that point. And of course we've got influence stake, we've got energy generation and research generation, that's fairly modern. And of course we can invest our income towards facilities and different options to expand those. But that pretty much gives you a basis of how you can get a good start going early on for the uh, latest build of the game at this time. We'll go ahead and link the video in the old video since it's frankly one of the more popular videos for Star Ruler 2 on YouTube now. So we'll definitely have that to uh, 
reference and bring more people back to this updated version here. And of course, as always, I hope that was helpful and inspirational in some way, and have a good day.